Welcome to today's video. I'm Rick Chapo with DMCAAgentService.com. Today we're going to provide an answer to the question, what is a DMCA counter notification? And the answer is um, pretty simple. We need to talk about the DMCA compliance process first, just so you know not only what it is, but where it comes in the process. Uh, so let's say that uh, there's a forum that you participate on and you post an image to it of a cartoon that you think is funny. Uh, the publisher of that cartoon sees it and they say, hey, you know, our, our content's being used without authorization. More importantly, we're not getting paid. Uh, and so they complain to the website. They file what's called a DMCA takedown notice. The website will then take down the content that you posted. Uh, at that point, they're going to send you an email message, typically, um, or text message, whatever way they have to communicate with you, saying, hey, we received a complaint. Um, you know, you have a right to file a counter notification. Now, in most cases, most people are not going to file a counter notification. They're just going to let it drop at that point. Um, you probably didn't realize maybe that, you know, you had done something that was causing copyright issues uh, and the copyright owner's happy because the content's down and that's the end of it. However, you do have a right to file this counter notification and all it is is essentially a statement that's laying out the basis for why you think you can use the content in question. So the actual steps are uh, identify the removed content. And in this case, you're going to probably, you know, either point out a link um, or whatever description uh, that the host that contacted you with provided. Uh, if, the, if there isn't a link because the content's down, you can certainly just describe what it is and um, you know the party that sent it to you is going to know what it is. Uh, the second step is you need to make you need to make a statement on it that based on a good faith belief, uh, the copyright owner has made a mistake or misidentified the copy, uh, the content in question uh, when they filed the complaint against you. And you would be surprised how often this actually happens. <laughs> We've seen a lot of cases, particularly when it's food, um, or, where copyright owners think that you know a photo is theirs, uh, but it's actually somebody else's. I mean, if you have a burrito on a white plate, well, there's only so many different ways that's going to look. Um, but belief, mis you know, mistake or, or misidentified is actually a very broad category. So, uh, for instance, mistake could include fair use uh, defenses and things of that sort. So basically you're saying, hey, I have a right to uh, use this image for whatever reason it may be. Then you have to provide your name, address, and phone number. This is very important because a lot of people uh, will ask, well, is there any way I can participate in the DMCA process without identifying myself? And the answer is no, uh, particularly in the counter notification step. I mean, it's, it's a fundamental part. If you don't include that inf information, your counter notification isn't going to be valid. And... Um, yeah, you know, you're out of luck. Uh, and then you are you have to make a statement saying that you are submitting to the jurisdiction of the U.S. federal courts. That's also a big, big important statement and one that can be a little scary if you think it through. What it really means is essentially you're saying, if I'm gonna, if I'm going to fight this, then I am agreeing to appear in court in federal court uh, as a defendant in a copyright infringement lawsuit filed by the copyright owner. Now, in submitting to jurisdiction. Uh, the important thing to understand is if you live in the United States, you're submitting to jurisdiction in your state, uh, not in the state where the copyright owner is uh, located. So if you're in uh, Washington and um, the copyright owner is in, I don't know, Virginia, um, if they want to sue you for copyright infringement, they're coming to your state in Washington, probably to lovely Seattle. Uh, you do not have to go to Virginia. Now, what if you live outside of the United States? Let's say you live in Montreal. Uh, well, in that case, you're submitting to jurisdiction in any federal court in the U.S. And you may think, well, what do I really care? I'm in Canada. Uh, well, they have these things called default judgments. And with a default judgment, somebody can go after you, go after all of your uh, assets or anything that would be located in the U.S. And what we find is a lot of banks uh, that we think of as uh, American banks or Canadian banks or European banks, well, they're really worldwide banks, um, so recovery isn't as difficult as you think. Uh, so those are important things to take in, into account. And then finally, your electronic signature. Um, so you're just going to essentially sign uh, the message. This will all be an email message, and it's just basically a reply uh, to the party that sent you the notification uh, that a complaint had been received against you. Now, once you file this, this uh, DMCA counter notification with them, uh, something interesting is going to happen. Uh, within 10 to 14 days, they're going to republish your content, the content that you posted, uh, unless they hear from the copyright owner um, in relation to a court order or notification that a copyright infringement lawsuit has actually been filed against you. And in that situation, the content will stay down. Uh, 
so that's the basic idea. What is the DMCA counter notification? Uh, it's just a process, part of the uh, compliance uh, procedure that everybody undertakes in these cases. If you get to a point where you're considering filing a DMCA counter notification, you probably really want to talk to a lawyer because you want to make sure you understand you know, the ramifications of that, good and bad, um, so you don't walk into some you know, serious problem. So that's it for today. Um, look for another video tomorrow when we cover some other aspect of the DMCA. Thank you.